We're here with Trey Murphy at the University of Virginia. Uh, Trey, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Thank you for having me on. So you kind of burst onto the scene this year, I think, to you know your more basic basketball fan, right? Um, maybe scouts knew you during your time at Rice, but uh, I think people saw a long, rangy wing, you know, shooting at, at a high level from three and, and defending, and then it, it seems like just continued to kind of rise and rise and rise. So with that in mind, right, and kind of the role you'll probably play in the NBA, who are some of the guys that you watch and say, you know, I, I think I can play this type of role? Really, I don't try to, like, say I can fit in the exact mold because I don't think I play like anybody in the NBA. I feel like I bring, like, a different versatility. But I love picking different people's games apart, like KD, Jason Tatum, Paul George, like, a lot of the bigger wings. Mm -hmm. that well, I like, like watching them a lot because I like the way they get to their spots, and I want to make sure that I can expand my game and make sure I'm doing everything on the floor so it's hard to guard. Um, all right, Trey, we're going to get into your film here. We're going to break down uh, five. Basically, we're doing a little uh, new type of segment. It's called Five on Five, where we're going to show five clips, five different like subsections, um, things that you do really well, and then five other sections ask you, like, hey, uh, what read could you have made here? What would you have done differently? Just kind of get inside your mind and, and see how you see the game. So um, I think initially, obviously, kind of your, your superpower right, uh, right off the bat in the NBA is your, is your shooting ability. A lot of it is just like understanding when to move, when to shift to open space. Um, and that's what I like about you. Like you're very efficient with your movements. Well, take me through this play here. What are you looking at? So in this right now, we're running principles, which is one of our base offenses. And one of the principal things that you have to do is that when somebody drives left, you have to move left. That's why you'll see Jay Huff in the corner, as well as me sliding into that open space. Because once you're pulling your defender in, then it'll either, open, it'll either open up more space for the driver or you'll also be open yourself. And so they lost a little bit of vision there, and that's when I was able to slide to that spot and hit the three. Yeah, that's great. Hands and feet already, you know, like really compact mechanics. You shoot the ball really easily. Um, and then it, this next clip here as well, uh, take me through this one. I, I just like kind of the – you mentioned like no ball stopping in your offense, right? And that's how a lot of teams want to play. Point five, you know, you look at like the Jazz, the Spurs – um, and, and this kind of defines that a little bit too. W take me through this one. So yeah, there's no ball stopping, but there's also like times we have to let the plays develop. Yep. And so basically when people are making cuts or setting screens, you have to be able to read that. And so uh, a lot of our movement based offense was just based on us just passing and, and then relying on the defense to like make a mistake. And so you see my man drift in to try to like stunt at Sam. And then I'm able to make a baseline pass and just get the defense behind so we can get open shots. So that was really the, the base of our offense. Yeah, no, this is great. I mean, he's going to come off tight. And then, like you said, your defenders kind of dig down on him, get lost. You, again, move to open space and then just make the simple pass. And, like, that ball moving mentality, I think, is, is going to fit right in. You're a guy who can shoot off a of movement a little bit as well. So t take me through this action here, what you guys are running. Yeah, right now we're running movers, blockers, and uh, – I was screaming for a lot of the time and because once people would get that little bit of an edge off the screen, my man would have to help a little bit. So then that's when I would back post the three and try to play out of closeouts. And there were times where people close out short and obviously I have to make a pay and hit that shot. And then I'll, I'll be able to play out of that, you know, with pump fakes and drive into the basket. Yeah, for sure. And, and we'll get into all that too. But definitely your floor spacing, um, you know, is, is a major asset of yours. You know, how, how do you find that balance between like, okay, when to let it fly and when to really get downhill? Because maybe there are times like this, right, where I know it's late clock. Like, do you feel like you could have ripped left there or no? Percent. I Like, in all honesty, I don't – I try not to think about it during the game. Like, offensively, I just feel like, all right, if I have space, I'm going to let it go because yep. I'm comfortable with that. And if I feel like they're too close, I'm going to try to drive past them. So I don't try to like – say, all right, I'm going to drive this possession or I'm going to shoot this possession because you can't really do that because the, de the defense will almost tell you what, like, the plan is. And so, yeah, this one I definitely feel like I could have drove baseline because there's a lot of space, probably could have tore down the rim. But I ended up getting a shot of it, so it was, it was good in the, in the long run. Yeah, eventually you get three is more than two. But, yeah, you're right. No, it's all instincts, right? You're read and react basketball. That's how teams want to play. If he closes out hard, okay, he's running you off, you're getting downhill. Closes out short. You know, let it fly, all that. And I think 
you're really good in, in all those areas. But again, definitely can maybe get downhill a little bit more, right? Get to the free throw line at a higher clip. So this is earlier on in the year, maybe before your body has filled out to the level it even has now, right? Um, what do you remember about this clip? I just remember I should have just went up on the right side, try to draw a foul or just finish the layup. I mean, I got to remember I'm 6'9", so I can't try to do a whole bunch of scoop loop layups and stuff like that because, I mean, just get to the rim and either they're going to call a foul or you're going to finish the layup. And, uh, yeah, that was earlier in the year, but, I mean, I don't think it's really too much of an excuse. I got I to gotta finish that one. So, you had, like you said earlier, tear down the rim, you definitely have that, and, and you'll see that on this clip here. So, okay, catch, you're going to kind of survey a little bit, rip, and then – bouncy um have you always have you always had that no i actually got my first in-game dunk my senior year of high school wow so, yeah yeah and then uh i mean at rice i was dunking a little bit but then like sophomore year i got a little bit more bouncy and then last year i was working with the strength coach of virginia and he just got me more mobile and more stable and i was able to just explode a lot so i was really really excited about that um but again so you talked about Okay, now we're playing off the of closeouts, right? So here's the dunk, and now it's about decision-making out of those closeouts, right? So um, we're going to have some of the good, some of the bad. I'm curious what you see here as you attack. So get downhill, they run you off, right? Um, what do you see here? On that one, I kind of, like, try to leave too far, and then I just didn't finish. I could have kicked it back out of the key A or even made, like, a pull-up jump shot, but I mean... I still wanted to make sure I was pursuing the ball, and I got I think I got a few offensive rebounds out of this one. Yeah, this this is great intensity too, right? Great motor, um, and, and it all comes with the caveat, right? So you end up getting a pretty good look at it, and then you stay after it. Multiple efforts. I mean, those are the things teams want to see. Yeah, and I think you have great touch overall. You know, whether you look at your three ball, how you shoot it from the free throw line, and I, I love this clip when we're talking about like being able to read and react on the fly. I thought this is maybe your best pass of the year. Um, Take me through this play here. So uh, on this one, I remember, <laughs> I remember exactly what happened. I, uh, I don't think when I went through the lane, I was like, "Dang, Reese is like really open." So I was like, you know, let me just get it there to him. Like, I was thinking in my head, I might try to dunk the ball, but I was like, well, let me add a little bit of flash in and throw it to Reese and look into the corner. So uh, I was really, he was really happy with that. That was a great pass. And, and so what? They're gonna double down in the post, right? Um, yeah. You give a target, he runs you off, they're confused. So you, you don't see a lot of uh, no-look passes at Virginia. No, definitely not. It's, they better get there. If they don't, then you'll see somebody on the bench after that. So, No, it's a great pass. And, and that's that type of read and react style you know, that, that we're talking about. Um, I'm curious, like, how much have you worked on? How much of an emphasis has like, shooting off the dribble been for you? A big emphasis. I mean, because... There's going to be a lot of times where people are going to run me off the line. Almost every single time they're going to try to run me off the line because of how well I shoot the ball. And so I got to make sure I get to open spaces. And just one thing that, like a little tidbit that I've gotten while I've been, while I've been in Miami is just that, like, when I shoot these mid-ranges, there's sometimes where I raise my chest up a little bit higher. So then they're either short or they're just not as powerful as they need to be. So as long as I keep my shoulder over my toes, then it makes it a better shot for me. And um, even, like, I can hop into it or even one, two. So, like, it doesn't really matter the footwork. But as long as I keep my shoulders over my toes, then it makes it a much easier shot. I know this is a little bit of a different situation, right? Late clock. But just to show you do have the ability to, to knock these down, right? A little step back? Definitely. No, definitely. I mean, when I get to my left hand, like, off the dribble, I feel like I can make that almost, like, like if not at the same rate as my catch and shoot, just a little bit less, I mean. It's just super comfortable, especially for righties, like getting to that left hand and shooting because you're already in line with the basket. Yeah, no question. And that's a great example of that right there. All right, so one thing I wanted to touch on too is just your cutting. Like I think you're one of the better cutters you know, in, in this draft, and I think some of that is offensive principles, but a lot of it is, is your IQ. Um, what's your read here? Really just watching for the defense, seeing when they start to take their eyes off me and I feel like I have a lot of speed in these cuts, and so uh, my teammates finding me is big. And I remember I'm still mad at myself because I should have dunked this one too, but <laughs> uh, still got my two points. But yeah, really just finding defense, going to sleep. That's the best time to really cut. Yeah, exactly. And Kia just kind of probing, you know, and then you read his eyes, and then another one here. You just realize what they're playing up the line, and then use your quickness, right? 
Yeah, exactly. And really, I told I told Reese like before that play, like before the play even started, I said, I promise you, they're gonna be up, and I can just take one step towards you, just dribble at me, I'm gonna go back door, and it worked a lot of times. So, yeah. Yeah, that's no, that's great, and that there's the there's your dunk. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now playing with the ball, right? We got some good, some bad here. Um, you mentioned like that's something you want to show more of. Uh, so take me through this play here against NC State. This play right here, I already know. Like I end up kicking out to the corner to somebody that I mean he wasn't there, and it, I should just slow down. And I was driving into almost like just like a, a dead spot because there's already a defender there and then my teammate there. So I just I just got to slow down and not really like rush things and let things develop because there wasn't anything there. I just got to come to a feet. And even to your point though, I mean if he slides into the corner maybe you have a kick out um but again a lot of it you know just comes with comfort and reps like you said getting back to those rice days and i think this is a good example of what you can look like here against duke so you know dj stewart's kind of up in you trying to speed you up and you really don't get rattled you look comfortable and then he does slide to that corner kick out right yes sir you yeah know? i was i do remember that big shot too from kia and uh really they were just they were really pressuring us a lot that game and i knew like if we were able to get screens and really just like hit people on screens, we were able to get open shots. So I knew K would slide to the corner, and I was just hoping he would make that three. And glad he did. So that's some of the uh, the throwback PG skills there, huh? Yeah, definitely. That bring back the middle school days. <laughs> yeah, looking comfortable with the ball, and then I had to throw one rice clip in there. Um, <laughs> do you go back and watch this ever? Man, there's there's a few times where I watch my rice clips and just. You know, just think about what I was thinking at that time, really. It's just, it's a blessing on how far I've gotten and still, still going. All right, that's offensively. And I think right away, I mean, making open shots, being a, a straight line driver, a cutter, running the floor in transition, ball mover, all that stuff, and then continuing to show the more layers that you have in your game, right? Um, but defensively, you know, what do you think you can bring to the NBA and how many positions do you feel like you can guard? I feel like I can guard one through four for sure. And really, I just owe that all to Virginia because before then, I did not play defense. That was not my calling card. I'll say that. And um, that really, literally practices like 80% defense. And so there's no choice but to get better at defense. And I just thank Coach Bennett for always like being really hard on me about this because he knew how important it was for me to be a, become a better defender. Like it's the reason why I went to Virginia because I knew that was the place where I could be the best defender I could be. Uh, you said it, you know, defending four positions, I think you can do the same. And so here against, what, Wendell Moore, um, what, what's going through your head in this and what's the key to defending him? Well, as soon as he called the ball, I looked at the shot clock on the other end, and I knew in my head he has around like two, three maybe dribbles, and then he's going to have to get a shot off. And so I was able to just like time that in order to get a block because – at the end of the shot clock, that's when your urgency really needs to be heightened, and you can't foul, but you can't let them score at the end of the shot clock because it's just draining and uh, hurts the momentum for the team. Yeah, absolutely, and having that understanding of the position that he's in, he's not a guy who really wants to shoot a lot of jump shots, but he has to here, and then you do a great job keeping him in front, and then there's the length, right? Correct. Picture perfect, left hand contest, get the block, fighting for the ball. Um, that's an energy-changing play right there. Um, and then also, like, even if you do get beat, you know, having the length to recover there, um, how comfortable are you switching on the guards? And I guess, what, do you, what are the tendencies of what this is, Carly Jones? Yeah, it's Carly Jones. For him, he didn't really shoot a lot of threes this, that year, and uh, he likes to get to his mid-range. And so I knew if I'm, like, close to him, he's going to try to drive the ball. And at the end of the day, he's going to have to shoot over me. And I'm going to live with those chances because I'm 6'9", and he's probably like six feet or something like that. So I feel like I can go get that. Yeah, perfect. And, okay, he does get a step, but even so, you recover beautifully. There's that big length, the reach, um, all that. And then, all right, David Johnson, what about him? What's what's the scouting part of him in this situation? Uh, definitely one of the harder people I guarded. He was super strong, and then he could shoot the ball and really shifty with the ball. So I knew I had to just play really – I had to play him really honest, and I couldn't – trying to like play any different hand games or anything like that because his off arm movement and off arm like action would be like really strong. And so I try to make sure I disengage as well as just like engage with him and then contest at the end. 
Yeah, that, no, that's a great point. He's a big body. He's long. Um, he can shoot it off the bounce. He can get to the rim. Uh, really impressive. And then I think a lot of it, too, is just like you said earlier, like being active and playing with energy. You know, like you have that length for a reason, using it there, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. Just getting my hands in the past. And, when it is with, and just being able to get deflections was super big in our, in our defense. And they were saying, literally, if you have to kick a ball, just like, do anything to disrupt the offense, it helps. And, like, that's time on the shot clock. That's uh, time for people to recover back to their man. It's anything. Like, any little second can just help the defense and, you know, how big it was, it was for Virginia. Yeah, no, that's that's picture perfect right there. Is there anyone you're looking forward to the challenge of defending in the NBA? Man, in all honesty, it's like all the superstars, like KD, Jason Tatum, all those guys, because I see them and see what they're doing, and I'm just like, wow, like, I want to see them, like, actually like, do that on me like I feel like I'm not gonna be able to really appreciate their greatness until like they do that uh when I'm guarding them and I'm just super excited for that really that's that's something I've really been looking forward to and so all right off the ball I know you guys are really sound off the ball defensively as well um but got some good some bad here want to pick your brain on all right so Georgia Tech um what do we got here what is your role in this situation I got a crack down earlier and um as soon as Sam goes to help I have to just Go, like just go right into Usher's hip and just check him in order to not let that pass get through. I try to split the difference and almost cheat the play in a way, but at the end of the day, the rim is the most important thing, so I got to protect the rim first and then be able to close out to the corner. Yeah, got you. So your goal here, you got to get inside of him, right? Whether it's for take away that drop-off or take away the, the offensive rebound, right? Correct, yes, correct. But again, like you said, thinking of splitting the difference because some of the best guards – if you do get inside of him, they're just going to make that, that hook pass, right? Correct. Yeah, um, correct. But, yeah, you have the size and length to be able to recover on that and then to get inside of him as well. Here's another one. How tough is this? Like, I'm just curious, in your situ- in your position, like, I mean, again, you kind of got to pick your poison here as well? Uh, in a sense. I mean, I'm the first tag, and then, like, the person at the bottom should, like, be, like, hit the nail or, like, outside, like, a restricted area. And so that's when – I know basically one thing that Coach Bennett always preached is like there's going to be make mistakes made on defense, and so like there's times we have to cover for people. And at that time, I should have covered for my, my teammate and just dropped down and then figured out the rest of it after the possession or like later on in the possession. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're someone who does do that and is really good off the ball, on the ball. And you had the challenge of chasing Buddy Beheim a little bit, right? Um, what's that challenge like? It's hot, insane march. That was that was a high urgency uh, task. And so I knew like he just wants to get to his shot, and I had to be able to be there and make it tough on him. And uh, the coaches they put me on him because they wanted my length to disrupt him a little bit more than uh, Reese guarding him. And so really, beating screens is going to be super important for me in the NBA because there's so many guys that run off of screens and are shooting the ball at such a high clip. I got to find a way to get skinny or get around those screens so I can make it tough on them. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. And so much of it is being able to stay attached to that outside hip, chase him, not trying to shoot the gap if he's a shooter, all those things, right? Yeah, and then one thing Coach Bennett was always say is like almost treat it like, like, a, like a track meet in a way. Like So if he's in lane three, you're like in lane four, like right on his hip but on the outside because if you're right behind him, they're going to find a way to hit you. Yeah. And so you do have to be like, close to him, but still on the outside of him. Um, you know, that's that's going to be a big part of your game is it being a guy who defends multiple positions and has the understanding of, like, how to help in these situations, right? I mean, this is just effort, energy. Um, so what's your role here? So they're going to – all right, you're going to double uh, the post, and then what do you have to do? You know, honestly, I made a mistake there, and I was supposed to just cover down on uh, Cole Bali, number 12, and uh, stay there. But, I mean, I was able to react and – get that still. I mean, if he was like a second earlier, then I'd probably, I'd probably been a layup. But, I mean, you know, you're going to make mistakes defensively, but at the end of the day, if you just play with effort and hustle, then a lot of that stuff will be made up. Yeah, but just covering it up, just like you said. And then I love this clip, too, just because of the, the ground that you cover. Like, there's not a lot of guys who are going to be able to meet him outside the charge circle here. I mean, watch this. You know, that's pretty impressive. Um, what's What are you thinking at this point, and what is your role on this play? Really, when teams just swing the ball, I know, and, like, our bottom man has to leave and go cover, somebody has to go help him. Like, you got to help the helper. And so I know, like, 
baseline is something that like, we don't allow, and you're not supposed to go baseline, but there's times you have to make up for, you know, your teammates getting beat. I mean, it's something they always preach. So just trying to be there for my teammate. Yeah, that's great. And then, you know, the ball is going to start moving a little bit, and then I think, you know, just because of, uh, you know, your activity, your length, you know, getting the steal and then, and then going the other direction. So uh, that's kind of look, a look at what you bring to the table, you know, on, on both ends of the floor. And um, when, like I said, when you look at a lot of the guys having success in the NBA, you know, you kind of fit that mold. Um, so my last question for you is, you know, there are all these players all over the world who want to play in the NBA also, right? And, and some of them are also 6'8", 6'9", with a 7'1 wingspan and maybe didn't shoot the ball at the same level as you or, you know, there are differences there. But um, why are you someone that NBA teams should look at as they're going through all these hundreds and thousands of players all over the world? Like, why is Trey Murphy someone that they should bet on, not just being like a roster guy, but being like a real difference maker in the NBA? Really just standing out basketball IQ-wise and then my approach to the game, I feel like it's like, if not similar, but like a lot, like very alike with a lot of other NBA players and I really love this game a lot, and so I do a lot of. I make a lot of sacrifices in order to be the best player that I can be, and then I want to win at the highest level and, and be a really competitive person. And like I know, like you should know that I'm going to give 100 percent effort with everything. And somebody that's willing to run through, run through a wall for my team in order to win, and so it's just super important to me. And I think just overall my versatility, like playing on the ball, playing offensively and defensively just is a lot different than a lot of other people. Yeah, and then the, uh, the proof is in the pudding at this point. And a projected first-round pick, someone who's probably going to continue moving up those boards as we get closer to the draft. So, Trey, I appreciate you taking the time, man, and best of luck throughout the process. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.